All right, so let's see, how is capacitance, voltage, and charge related? So let's look back over here at the app. Again, we're going to suspend our disbelief and pretend that we're uh, actually doing this and we can count all the charges on this plate. Okay, so when we're sitting here at zero volts, I'm increasing the voltage. What's happening to the charge on the plates? Am I getting more red dots or fewer red dots as I'm increasing the voltage? More, increasing. So let's graph that. Wouldn't that look like um, Q is what we were measuring or looking at versus V? And Q would be coulombs and voltage is joules per coulomb or just volts if you want to. Does that seem like a reasonable equation as the voltage increased, the charge increased? Yeah. So, ooh, we could write an equation, right? Q is equal to the slope of that line times the voltage. And the slope of that line being constant is actually what we call the capacitance. So QCV or QVC, I don't care which one you call it. So Q, whoops, Q is the charge on one plate because, hey, what's the total charge on the capacitor? Zero. Thank you. So when we talk about the charge on the capacitor, we're actually talking about the charge on one of the plates because that's how much charge could move, okay? Or you could talk about being the negative plate, okay? So this is the charge on one plate. And charge is measured in coulombs. This is our capacitance, sometimes called a cap, especially if you're abbreviating because you're running out of space, measured in farads. And this is your voltage. Measured in volts. So, this is the relationship between charge, voltage, and capacitance. Now, there's another relationship that I see between these two um, variables. What do I get when I multiply coulombs and joules per coulomb? Joules, energy. Okay, so let's think about this. A capacitor stores charge, okay? And that charge can be used. So, for example... If you've got um, the capacitor that you probably don't even think about but you use all the time is a capacitor that's probably in the flash of your camera. So you've got a battery wired to a switch that can close and connect it to a capacitor. The symbol for a capacitor is two double lines, kind of like the parallel plates. Then well, let's have another switch over here and then let's connect it to a light bulb. Okay. So now if I close this switch, the, the charge suddenly starts flowing and, and truly our negative charge builds up on the bottom and our um, negative charges on the top plate are pushed away, leaving our positive charges there. But the positive side of the battery will be polarized or will polarize the top of the capacitor to be positive because it's connected to the positive side of the battery, and the negative side of the battery is connected to the bottom side of our capacitor. So it will be negative. So positive to positive, negative to negative. Now, it's all charged up. If I open that circuit and then I close this one right here. It's like you're suddenly, um, you put a bridge between the boys and girls camp. They don't have to cross the lake anymore. The, the lake, you know, the impassable lake, the bog of eternal stench that nobody wanted to go into. So what are the, what are the electrons going to want to do? They're going to go, woo, as fast as they can. That's the electron. So what's the conventional current going to do? The other way. What would your positive test charge do? And in that moving, they're going to go through this light bulb. And what's that light bulb going to do?